So my drive motor has arrived and I can confirm that it works brilliantly. This is a 25 RPM one and it runs well on 15 volts which um, it takes a picture every once every two seconds. That's uh, about the result. So basically it just goes through that hole there like that. And then it engages with this drive shaft in here, uh, like that. So all I did was cut a slot in the end and basically when it turns it's trying to force itself around this way so that that bit there where the case clips onto that stops it from rotating any further and then I just hold it on using a cable tie uh, and then I reuse the cable tie basically uh, and it stays on like that so I made it by just 6 millimeter copper tube and I flared it out a bit so I could get it on and then basically I just made it spin and watch the end and then kept adjusting it, bending it until it uh, rotated quite straight and true so it doesn't move around. So to convert a film, if it's a sound film, what I'll do is uh, I'll basically just run the line out uh, cable that I made up which is stored under here. Uh, and that's just got an adjustment on it for adjusting the audio level that connects into the camera and basically I'll just record a video through the lens uh, and then I'll just extract the sound off the camera as a WAV file later on using software on the computer uh, and then I'll do my frame by frame scanning It is though very important to get the audio synced up right so to help me do that uh, I have to mark the film so what I do is, um, this is the start of the film here, I'll mark this, the sound area of the film and that's just basically just a load of small scratches very close together and then 26 frames later uh, I've got a visual indicator so that when this runs through the projector uh, it's going to run through the projector that way so the sound pickup is going to be there and when the sound pickup's there those frames are at the gate so it will make sort of a, a noise that I can pick up in the sound and then use as a sync point and I'll do that at the end of the film as well. The problem with this setup is I can't actually run the projector with this motor attached because it's got one gear inside it so this shaft cannot be turned from this end only the motor can turn it so this comes off while I thread the projector and then run it to the correct point in the film because some films have really long leaders on them. For the light source that's just a 10 watt LED connected to a constant current, constant voltage driver. In front of that I've got light diffuser sheet which um, I bought four sheets of A4 off it, it's just like plastic sheet that makes the light more even. And the shutter's just in front of there. Uh, so I'm going to show the loading and threading process just now. And there we go, uh, and then basically I'll just run it up to close to where those X marks are that I made for getting the sink right. And then once there's enough hanging out the back here, I'll just put it on the take up reel. So the way the shutter release mechanism works is I've just basically got a... I've just basically modified a cable which has got a... which has got the relevant connector for my camera on the end and I basically using a reed switch and resistors but um, it just depends on what camera you've got you'll have to look up the circuit diagram of the shutter release connection on your camera and make up your own uh, so how that works is I've just stuck a magnet to the shutter uh, and you'll probably see it just there it just comes past the reed switch at that point uh, so when the shutter blade is just past uh, the gate uh, where the light shines through it will take a picture and then that's just taking one picture per revolution and that's connected into the camera using that cable and it's as simple as that nothing else is needed 
So here's what it looks like when it's working. I'm um, just applying 15 volts now. And there we go. So here it is in operation. The film I'm converting is a film called Flame and it was made for British Gas by a company called Infovision Films. So this film will not give a good idea of the quality this machine can produce because this film actually came uh, basically off a VHS recording. But it wasn't VHS, it was a type C videotape. So the original program was actually recorded using a Sony BVH2000 uh, type C tape recorder. And the resolution of that is about 720 by 576. So uh, it's not a good idea of the quality. But uh, it's an interesting print nonetheless because it would have been recorded using a synchronised camera pointed at some sort of high quality TV monitor and it would have all been synced up and uh, a special machine would have recorded the soundtrack as well so but luckily I've got another film I've already converted this one by the way uh, this is an old road safety film a cringy road safety green cross code film so uh, that one was not made in the same way. This was like, this has actually come off basically contact printing, I think, uh, basically copying the negative uh, directly from the camera. Uh, so it's higher quality, this one. So now I'm on a part of the film which has um, a good bit of white on it and I'm just setting the exposure so I can see zebra stripes on the uh, white parts and I'm trying to get the background as black as I can so uh, you'll have to play about with exposure a bit and always have the camera on manual mode. So I had to start this one again because I found it was missing frames but what I've done is moved the sensor closer to the magnet and that seems to have sorted it. And one other thing, if your camera has electronic shutter use it and that means that the mechanical shutter is not used so that uh, basically it's not going to wear out. So I think I'll finish this video here and uh, I'll upload another one showing how to sync up the audio to the video um, if you're doing sound films and then I'll actually show you the films I've converted.